see you today. This is a fun uh, lesson to jump in on if you're wanting to get used to it. I'm just here to mess around with paints. I'm not actually doing anything with the lesson. You're welcome. I'm just saying you're welcome to do it if you want to. Uh, you might. Um, so uh, this lesson, so you'll see here, I have, um, I'm going to demo this lesson today in acrylic, but I think you could pretty much use any paint you wanted to for this lesson. If you like to use oil, you can use oil, and you know how to use oil, you should do that. If you're a beginner, you should stick to a water-based medium. Um, when I say water-based, I mean watercolor is something that you use, you dip, you make your brush wet with water, you know, to get slicker. So you could be acrylic paint, it could be watercolor paint, it could be gouache. Um, I'm going to demonstrate an acrylic. Uh, today. And the other thing that's kind of neat about today's lesson is we have options. So I actually have three paintings um, options, kind of simplified still lifes, right, that somebody else painted. But you're going to see these are in black and white. So um, you guys are going to tell me which one of these you want to do. I'm going to help you with the drawing. We're going to draw it, and then you get to pick your paint colors. So you'll notice that these colors match values. Uh, what do I mean by that? What's a value? Darkness or lightness. Right, of any color, right? So this is a really, we know this is a light value. We know this is a medium value. We know this is a slightly darker medium and we know this is a dark value, right? So all of the colors that you pick once we decide which we're the same over here, right? Dark, light, lightish, medium, medium, dark, dark, medium, dark, right? Can you see how these kind of all the values of them really? So once we get this sketch in, you get to paint these in whatever colors you want and in whatever medium. So my question is, which one do you guys want to do? Speak up now. Three pairs. The three pairs. Anybody else have any other? Yep, Jackie's like, yep, yep. Emma, you go with that? All right. So if you look on the beginning of the thread, you'll see the original colors, but I prefer you not to. I prefer you actually to work with these colors and start associating color with value. There we go. And you can work on canvas if you're using watercolor or gouache, you can use watercolor paper. Um, let's see, I've got canvas here. Yeah. What I really want to do. I'm just going to take my pencil right now and I have a very long sheet of canvas because I cut it off and then didn't. I'm going to just draw a line like this so that I have a fairly, you know, kind of squarish piece of canvas. You guys can use whatever you want for this. Um, and then our first lines, we're going to start with a pencil. Let me, and you'll notice that these three pairs are, I'm going to do the three pairs and their shadows, are kind of connected together. Right, so our first lines, and I'm not, we're not going to, we're not going to grid this, we're going to see how it goes to not grid it. Sorry, I mean, can you push it just a little bit? Right. Down here is our palette paper, which we'll be using to put our paints on if you're going to use a coat. Let's get this just a little bit closer. There we go. So I can see the edge. All right. Um, and to keep this less confusing for you, I'm going to fold these white edges so you can't see them. Okay. 
So these shapes are pretty simple, but this is a pretty compelling looking piece, isn't it? Um, here. I have a question. Yeah. In the in the front, you see what is basically probably the edge of the table and the tablecloth coming down. I'm yep. assuming. I think so. But in the back, what's going on with that very light blue? Is that the back of the table? What do you think? What could it be? It could be the back of the table, but it goes. It's. It's straighter, it's not parallel to the line in front. So if it is the back of the table, it's not. Are you talking about right here? No, low, a little bit lower. Line between what looks like white on, on the black and white. Yes, yes, those three little spots in between. Three little shapes, that's just the back of the table. That's the, the back of the table. Divides. This it's, is where the wall is, and that's where the right. table but, yeah. the, but they're not really quite well, I guess they are parallel. Okay, see, so you're point. getting caught up in the colors that you're looking at. You're confusing yourself. You're overthinking. No, I'm, looking at, no, I'm looking at the lines. I'm looking at the line that's yeah. the front of the table oh, and yeah. the line that's it's the back. They slanted. But, but why would it be parallel when it's not from the straight front? That's yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly yeah. parallel. Yeah. So I see what you're saying. This yeah. is just slightly, yeah. One of the pairs is down, and this is just slightly angled. Okay. Yeah, the table is not from the front either. That's well, why it's not it's parallel. Right. So it has it's a panicking point to the right there. Yeah, that's just to make it kind of a little bit less flat and more interesting. It's not bothersome. It just kind of shows that you're looking at it from a certain angle. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Sorry, I did not understand that. Um, so okay. that I, that's why I jumped in because I understood what you were saying. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so here it is. Right there. All right. So when we start this, you can kind of see that this guy's, let's see. These guys, if this is like the halfway point, I'm going to kind of generally identify. We're really only super interested in these pairs themselves. And Emma, you can just go ahead and sketch as you would, right? Using your iPad or whatever medium you want. I know you don't need to necessarily follow these directions unless you need them. Um, but I like to kind of identify the center so that I know where that that pair that kind of sits right where the what's in the center what's in the center is this pair so if i came here i'm kind of yep this is the center i kind of know that i'm going to start a little bit like i'm going to start about right here is a great way to start my pairs on this side so I'm going to come up. So that's the only time I'm really, I don't dip down below. That here. Uh, and I can see, so I'm just bringing, here I am, I'm going to bring my, my, I can bring my border in just a little bit on my, on my painting, so that my hair fits on this side, right, and then just kind of below the center is where, so if I start with this line, it comes, oh, I come a little bit diagonally up, I do these top shapes, I do this one, this is, by the way, only going to where the table meets the wall. And then I come down a little bit lower. You see, it's kind of a slightly below the middle point. That's my beginning end. Yeah, it's hard to see. So hold on, I'm going to paint it a little bit bigger. I sometimes think it's really fun to, to see how another painter kind of treats a subject because we learned something about like mark making and simplifying and all of that. So start with that. I'll take a picture of it. Okay. 
And then when you're ready, you can send that across and you guys let me know when you're ready to go to the next section. Obviously, hi, Tons. It's Addie. Um, hi, Addie. Hi, I just got here, so I'm late. All right, Bye. so here's what we're doing. Uh, we are working on this, we're drawing this, these pairs on using, but we're getting to choose any paint medium we want. So you can, I am drawing on canvas because I'm going to use acrylic, but you could use watercolor paper and watercolor. You could use gouache. I believe Emma is using her iPad, <laughs> right? So like you can use any medium that you want to get started with this drawing, to get started with this painting. So all I did was create a kind of square, basically slight, mostly square uh, shape on my canvas. And then I de identified where the half, the halfway point, you know, the exact center of the canvas was. I identified that, that's like right here. And then I started my drawing up here. I did this section through here. So that's where we are. And when you guys are ready, let's see. Oh, yeah, and you can go ahead if you want, like Jean just did. Let me look. Jean, this is too big. And these, what I'm missing are the shadows. So I want to see the oh, I haven't done the shadows yet. But I want you to get those in so that I can see how they relate, right? Okay. Yeah, so get the shadow shapes in and then I'll take a look at this again. I feel like this needs to come in just a touch. Which uh, one? This one shouldn't be as tall as this one. Why is this one's tall? Okay. And right now I think that one is as tall as this one is. This needs to be cut in just a little bit. And then over here, I'm starting with this red line. I'm kind of going, let's see. Interesting thing about pairs, they have these very interesting shifts. You think it's just one straight or curved line, but it totally isn't. It's like straight out. They're very geometric, more geometric than you would think. And particularly in the way these ones are painted. So here's the kind of shape of the pair. And then I'm coming down to do the shadow as well. So the shadow comes down to here, right where it meets with the bottom of the pair. And then it comes out and kind of down like that. So that's the kind of, so when I've got this and I know as I start to add in my other shapes that the shadow is, you know, being given the, the space that it needs. And let's see, did I even do that right? We'll see. Now as I'm starting to do, oh yeah, I did that, uh, I did that right. So notice how many places this pair is kind of, the pairs have this just marvelous geometric shapes. Yeah, constructing the pair is a heck of a lot easier than deconstructing it. <laughs> yeah, I've already given up on that. <laughs> We're joking about our abstract art class on Tuesday where the teacher was like, okay, deconstruct the house. <laughs> it was actually pretty neat. It was great. Yeah. And where's my... My red. Oh, here it is. So then, of course, then afterwards you can kind of pull in your. So you can see the. You can I. It's the pair is the pairs are really beautiful, but the um, the shadows, the way the artist portrays the shadows, uh, are also really neat. 
There we go. So then you can get your pear shapes in, but right, we're paying attention to the shadows as well. There's these cast shadows. Well, there's no way to be realistic because the the edges are so thick. Um, these are pretty realistic. I mean, you know what they are. But I mean, if you're trying to do like the skin of a pear, you wouldn't make it a quarter of an inch thick. It's, I don't, I don't think this, I think you're, I think you're thinking a little literally. Yeah. I think this out, this, I, I think you're thinking of this as the outs, as the skin of the pear. All of this is the skin of the pear. Do you see what I'm saying? All of this is the skin of the pear. This is just the dark side. This is the light side. Everything is the skin of the pear. Uh, they're just very dark. Is that what I, am I misunderstanding what you're saying? No, you're completely understanding. Okay, so yeah, you're getting too much into. So, Jean, you're uh, trying to apply uh, your your level of, pair idea of a pair onto what's happening here. This is not skin; these dark parts. This is the dark side of the pair. They just she's just made them very strong, but everything is the skin. We can't see any of the inside of the pair. Can you see how that doesn't help you? Yes, and in fact is problematic. Yes. <laughs> like <I> said, <laughs> you can tell your left brain to go have a beer right now. <laughs> right. Left brain, go away, go away. Go away, you're not helping. <laughs> and then here, I'm going to... And don't worry if you get a little bit lost. My whole job is to get you out. So don't panic as we start to sketch these things out. Um, this, this artist uses some really cool, strong contour lines to emphasize certain parts of her objects. Like these dark lines are really, you know, strong, dark shadow areas. And they're neat. She's not, she's not interested in blending the shadows. She's not interested in blending the shadows. Yes, she's, uh, which is one of the reasons we're doing this as a beginning exercise. Because we don't have to worry about blending. We're more just creating, we're recreating values, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, let's see. Uh, These are closer together. They almost touch. Look at the shadow shape. Jean. Yeah, I gave I gave room for the the red that's kind of outside the black. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so don't do that because that's just to show you. The red is just to show you the lines. Look at how these. Black yeah, but even even in the in the color photo, there's oh well, yeah. fairly right there. There's there's like. The black is fairly thin. But right. and, and look at, and I also want to point out that the the question that you asked at the beginning caused you to exaggerate greatly the slant that's happening here. It's barely happening. It's mostly straight. So I want you to straighten up this back line, and I also want you to look at where the back line is in relation to where the pairs are. So notice how this well, pair. So look at this shape. So instead of erase your black, your back line where the wall is, recreate this these three little shapes of white on either between all the pairs, and then you're going to have how the line slants. Okay. Also, my my canvas is eight by ten, and this in the picture is very square. So. Right. You may have to give a little bit more space on this side. That's yeah. not to do with how these guys interact together. You might have to float them a little bit on this side, um, a little bit more space on this side. Still, don't try to stretch things out to fit your canvas. That's not that is that's not a help. That's not helpful to you. So yeah, pay attention to this to see a where this wall back wall is. All right, let's see, Jack. Um, not bad, Jackie. All right, so just keep, you're just gonna keep 
this shape should be kind of coming jackie look at this this shape kind of comes down like this um these pair the pairs almost touch each other here yeah okay right. and look at the shape of the light and then the shadow in between them oh i think i've got my shadow mixed up with my outside you do so erase that inside erase this yeah. in here and yeah. look at these shapes we are in a way deconstructing and constructing not bad uh addy that looks pretty good okay so now addy you're going to go on the other side get the if you want to, you could draw the pair before you draw the shadow, but I guarantee that you'll have to redraw the pair once you start to add the shadow in. It's, ni it's nice to okay. kind of consider the shadow at the beginning, mm -hmm. That's great, right? Because um, it helps you kind of get all the things that are in proportion. So you see how I'm looking at this shape, mm -hmm. right? This shape, this shape, and this shape are the shadows. And I want to have, there is prominent in this, and so are these little pieces back here. And there is prominent as anything else. Um, okay. Slightly more angled up. Okay. By the way, when you really look at this, these are just, um, it's funny, they really are just shapes, light, medium, and dark shapes which is what makes this so fun. All right, so then we're here and then inside, of course, are all the divisions between light, medium, medium dark, super dark, super dark, do you like that as a term? Right, so then I add these in, and then whatever of these shapes I want. Oh, why not? You're going to really get into this once you get the drawing done. I mean, it's a color. By the way, you guys are doing great. And then here is the next set of lines. Probably should have used a different color, but, but whatever. So as always, I want to kind of remind you guys, as always, where we're trying to get you comfortable with is understanding visual, like what a shapes in space, right? All of these lessons, the vast majority of our time is spent kind of determining how much space different shapes take up, light, medium, and dark shapes. Notice that this area down here is a little bit lighter. Notice that they're actually, oh yeah, I can make them really even a little bit. There we go. I'm still adjust, I'm kind of adjusting the size of my pairs too, still doing that. This. Notice there's kind of a dark outline around the shadow, around the edge here. All of those play a role. Dark outline around here. Dark outline here. Okay. 
notice how simple her shapes are, but how deeply detailed these pairs are. There is no doubt, A, what these are, and B, kind of even how they, even how they relate to the space. Everything, um, although it's simple, shapes are masterful. It almost looks like she did a red underpainting. Perhaps. Like if you look at the top where there's some red coming through and then it's like the- Okay, I want you to stop looking at that color picture because you're- oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't look at the color picture. I know how much you want to. <laughs> I should have just taken it's it so off. Pretty. It really is, it really is. And we'll look at it afterwards. I tell you what, I'm gonna remove it and then I'll pull it back. I'll put it back in. I'm actually gonna remove it so you guys can't be influenced by it. I shouldn't have given it to you. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I think, but also she uses red as an outline, um, which is interesting. So, okay, how do I, how do I delete this? Okay. Dang it, I think it just deleted it for me. Anyway, try not to look at it. We'll look at it at the end. If you want to look at it at the beginning, you can just for a few ideas. But I would love you to get your own ideas about this, right? And we're not even necessarily going to worry about underpaintings. I'm just going to have you guys go straight in with light mediums and darks that you like. And then if, if they look flat, we'll just layer some colors on top. So here's kind of where we want to get to. It always looks so weird. Actually, that was very right brain of you, though, Jean, to like look and try and figure out <laughs> what is you know, what is the underpainting. I like it. I like. It. With my doggy still. <coughs> Where's your doggy? I'm with my doggy. I'm painting the doggy. Oh, while she's there or from the photo? Oh, from the photo. Okay. The photo is for my dog trainer. She was here today, so and she loves it. So that's that's always something. So I can continue training my dog and afford it. <laughs> I love it. It works. Yeah. Hey, I just traded three paintings for my car. <laughs> oh, wow. I just bought a car with paintings. I was really oh, I love it. I love that so much. <laughs> it's yes, an old, wonderful old car. It's she's such a good girl. And and the person who got the paintings was like, are you sure you got a good deal? Like, this is an old car. It doesn't do that. I'm like, I have a car. <laughs> paintings. That is the coolest. Isn't that great? I think that's the best, like, mon like, like monetary exchange. Yeah. Better. The best. The best Non-monetary exchange that I've done for my paintings this year. I traded a bowl for a sculptor. I... I I I gave I gave away a boat for a sculpture. So you gave away a what? A boat, or oh, like a small boat with a, a small boat for a sculpture. You did <laughs> what sculpture? Uh, it's it's a ram. Nice, it's a ram. It's beautiful. I love it. That's funny. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so what kind of car did you get? It's a, you'll, uh, next time you come up, you'll get to see it. It's an, it's a 2006 Ford Taurus. 
Um, it's green. It has the, the license plates say jelly bean because it looks oh, like nice. a jelly bean. Um, you totally like it's it's and it's a wonderful car. Like it's totally does everything that I needed to do. It's not fancy. Um, How many miles on it? Uh, I think like 150,000 or something like that. So who knows how long it'll go. Um, but like, I, yeah, I traded it for three paintings. Well, that sounds like you paid a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did. But it was worth, I mean, you know, but like if I had to buy a car, it would be, thousand, you know, I'd put out even a car like that. I would yeah. probably put out lots and lots of lots and lots of cash. That, that is why the person looked at me and said, I think I got the better deal. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, but I don't care. It's all right. I can paint fast. <laughs> What's wrong, baby? He's dreaming and crying. Oh, Bubbles is now crying too. What's the matter? What? Oh. Bubbles, what's wrong? She just like she wants some love. Uh oh, let's see. Nice. Look, Emma Bergman has already surged ahead. What are you working with, Emma? Acrylic gouache. Well, I I've been trying to turn this into like a sketchbook, and I put some uh gesso down on the pages of a book mm -hmm. and the red is acrylic but the purple is gouache and i'm doing nice. so you're gonna do a duo oh i love it yeah we're just playing <laughs> yeah all right diana i'm gonna tell you the same thing i told you last night i don't think the white shapes are the same yet i don't think you've got the the shape of the dog's head right yet Send over the picture, but I'm I'm ninety or I'll I'll find it. I I still feel like this dog's head is too short, and this white shape has to be kind of longer and jollier. Send me the picture. Yeah, send me the picture. Can you send me the picture next to the photo next to the painting, so uh, we can really look at it? Yeah, probably. Not. Or I can do that because I can take a photo. Jackie, don't forget your darks. This looks great, but don't forget your darks outline here. There's like a dark outline that's part of the pair, and then there's a dark outline that there's a lighter outline that's the shadow. But that, that's what I'm not understanding. So I have to outline that in pencil, and then I'll just paint it a different. I'll paint it like black or whatever. Well, I mean, look at the, yeah, it's just dark compared to everything else. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely part of the pair and the yep. shadow is lighter. That's, maybe you're confused by that. You feel no, like- No, 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 I can, I can see it. I yeah, just yeah, yeah. didn't know that I should do it. Yeah, draw it, draw it, just like any other shape. Let's see. Okay, got it. Okay, maybe we're better than I- Oh, I know what the problem is. Okay, Diana, do you, do you mind? I'm gonna like print this and I'm gonna show you something okay. um, that I'm noticing. It's it's a, it's kind of, it's a shape issue, but it's not the same one. Now I see where the shape issue is. But in, instead of trying to describe it, I'm gonna print it. Okay. All right. So everybody, once you've got your sketch out, give me a minute. Let me get everybody started on the next one. You're gonna, Look at your paint colors and you're going to find three colors that represent, when you put them next to each other, light, medium, and dark. And they can be any colors at all. They do not have to be, if you want them to be all blues, you can totally do that. But they can be any colors. They don't have to have any relationship to each other other than the fact that when you put them next to each other, one reads as dark one reads as medium and one reads as light. So what do I mean by that? Let's see. I'm laying down colors I think that represent dark, medium, and light. Okay. 
interestingly enough, they're all primaries, right? Yellow. I'm giving myself a little bit of white because sometimes I need to lighten a color to make it read value. The big problem with the golden tubes is that they don't like to stay, the caps don't like to stay on. So I feel like I'm constantly having to bust through my, uh, that looks pretty good, Tosh. I see that you've, um, you've cropped this a little bit, this pair on the, on the right. You've yeah, I ran through the room and I'm using an exact square sheet, so I wasn't sure. Well, actually, if you look at this, you'll see that the length of this pair should be only up to about here. And you, so you have this pair too big. So if you make it smaller, you'll be able to fit it in. Okay. Well, yeah. Yep, you just made it too big. So just make that one on the right smaller. Um, okay. So you can see here, I have, and uh, let's see, let me add my um, spotlight up here so you can see my setup. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, here's my setup. You can see my water. So I'm using acrylic. This is, um, this is, this is my acrylic paint. It's on a pat piece of palette paper, which I'll just throw away. I'm gonna use a pretty big brush. Um, I'm going to use this big, goofy, poke, like pointy brush, actually. I almost never use a brush like this, but why not? I'm going to do it. And um, I'm going to dip my brush in water and get it wet before I put it in the paint. And now I'm going to lay it in the paint. I'm going to pull some paint up. This is phthalo blue. So notice I kind of have a fair amount of paint on my brush. And now I'm going to go in and paint the darkest areas of my painting. I knew that that bright blue is going to be a, a crowd pleaser. Such a neat color, right? And I also know that there's this kind of black dark line around the edge of this pair, every pair actually, everything. So I can keep kind of going around. And here, here, my dark edge. Anybody have any idea where the light's coming from, by the way? That's also pretty clear. The right. Yeah, how do you know? Because that's where the, it's hitting the lighter colors there. Yeah, yeah. Notice that everything on this side is darker. On the left side is darker. Mm -hmm. And on the side that's kind of away from the light. So the light's coming this way. So the parts that are sticking up closer are darker. Yeah. All right. Interesting. I almost never use a brush like this, but I found it really helpful to use things. Here. All right. Now I'm cleaning my brush out in the water and uh, squeezing it out. And uh, I'll dip my brush in the water again. And I'm going to lay out my medium. Let's see how my medium looks next to my dark. That's actually pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna um, get rid of this. You don't need to see me painting now. You can see that I'm constantly getting my brush wet. But you know, I actually, I think I wanna lighten it a little bit. So I'm gonna actually pull a little bit of yellow into my white, my red, create kind of more of an orangey color. Also notice if I mix and notice if I, I need a lot of yellow and just a tiny bit of red. Also notice if my paint is still wet, see how I kind of dragged a little bit of blue into my paint. So if you want to avoid that, I'm not really worried about that. I can always cover up with more paint, but if you're worried about that, you should wait until the paint dries or work on the light So I'm adding in my medium. So the main reason I know this medium works is that this reads as lighter than this. I, it totally 
looks. And this medium is darker. It's not as dark as the blue, but down here. So there's like different mediums too, right? There's light medium, there's a dark medium. So as I go in and I start filling out, oh, and when I add that in, I can see this needs to be much lighter. So notice, see how I'm going right in on top of my paint and adding more light paint to make this light. So I have no issues in doing that. And then my light, cleaning my brush again, I'm going to take a bit of yellow and mix it with a lot of white to really get my light to read as light. And for the most part, these colors are blending, which is one of the reasons I like this piece. I thought, oh, well, this is a good chance to practice values, right? So see how I had to lighten my yellow. So can you see how these yellows read as light, medium, and dark when they're next to each other? And here, here's a light. This area is super light. Uh, these areas are kind of a darker medium, right? That means the light needs to look quite light next to the medium. So I'm just quickly demonstrating for you. And your colors can be any colors that you want. This is darker. I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue and red together for this part. Now it's still is not dark, it's a little bit dark. So notice I'm uh, having a little bit of an issue trying to get my medium to be medium enough. Sometimes I have to lighten it with a little bit of, of light yellow or white. And also the shadow is kind of this medium color. So you can look at the colors of the pairs to get ideas. Oh, I can see this needs to be lighter. This side needs to be lighter. So can you see I'm going right in over with this wet paint and kind of making this lighter. And I'm also adding in. So see how I can kind of adjust. Now this is a new material for some of you. Uh, Tosh, that looks great. See, you didn't need to cut it off. You just needed to measure correct, right? Measure yeah. twice, cut off never. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the, you don't have to use these colors. No, this needs to be even lighter. Chunky little piece of. That's better. And then down here is a kind of lighter. You'll notice once you start to get into this, that within the this context of light, medium, and dark, there's two other half tones. There's a lighter one, and then there's a darker one. So you start to go in, you might cover up some of this. So this is your beginning guys, as like that. And I, I feel like I almost should remove it. That looks great, Addy, good job. So I feel like I almost, I'm gonna take a picture of it, but I'm gonna remove it because I don't want it to influence you too much. You can decide all your colors are the same, but just different values, right? So like different blues. Um, you can do paints, you can do, or you can do whatever you want. Um, but the, the challenge is that when you put these colors next to each other on the canvas, they need to read as dark, medium, and light. 
Got it? So just play. Now you get to play. And, and you know, there'll be challenges kind of based on. So anyway, I want to see what you come up with. Should I keep this up here? Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. I just don't want it to influence you. You don't need it. These colors don't need to be your colors. Um. All right, Diana, now, now I'm going to do it. I'll be right back. You can use a flat brush. You can use, um, I want you to use a bigger brush. You're going to find that using a little brush, you're going to want to because you think you have more control. It's going to make you nuts. It's going to drive you crazy. Bigger brushes are better. Um, let's So, um, Okay, Diane, I'm going to send this upside down and you're going to see the problem. Okay. I'm going to send this to you upside down and you're going to see the problem. Okay. Uh, hold on. I'm going to do two more measurements before I do that. Hold on. I'm just double checking to see that I've got this correct. I have done little correction since you you do not have the shape of the head right. It's fundamentally not right. I'm going to show you 
I'm going to show you what the problem is. Yep. So this is Okay, here we are. Okay. So I've sent that across to you. I've sent it upside down. Right. You're leaning too far. You've got too much dark on the left side. And the shape of the dark part of the eye on the right is too... The shape isn't right, you'll see it. It's like a straight angle. So if you look at it upside down, here, I'm gonna have to show you. Here, it's like your dog is leaning in the wrong direction. It's easier to see if it's upside down. It's up there. But it's easier to see if it's upside down. Where are we here on Zoom? All right. So if you look here, you will see that this is like a straight line and then an angle over. Straight line and angle over. Yeah. You had this going on. Uh-huh. So your black shape is not correct so you're basically jutting out on this side in a weird you're you're kind of too skinny on this side and you don't have enough white and then on this side the dark comes out too far you have it out to here but really it ends it's more like this it's less it's more up like that so you see you have all this extra dark here. Okay. Up white here. And then, and, and really what you need to see is that the relationship, these are, this is a straight angle and then an angle over. And then look, it's almost like, right? There is like a quarter of a pie in which this shape is more oblong and there's a white edge around it. You see the difference between what you've done? Yeah, I do. Significant enough that it does not look like her dog. So, and then also dark comes down here a little bit more, not quite that much. So it's like you put all the, the, the bigness of the size over here and you trimmed it off too much here. I do think the nose is in the right place.
but it's too fat on this side and too thin on this side and not the right shape. Okay. Yeah. You have it kind of going out like this and then up. It really should be straight down. Yep, straight down, straight down, straight over. But the thing with the, our right side is mm -hmm. that it's hair sticking out and it's just the skeleton under and the skeleton is pointing out, but the You've got the neck in the wrong place too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Maybe. Yep, you do not, yeah, you just do not, the shape, yes, you do, I, I know you think that's what's going on, but it's, yeah, uh, it, you just do not have, the skeleton is like this, look at the skeleton, look at the shape of the skeleton on here, straight across, angled up. Yeah, all right, okay. All right. Way more out and angled out, like that. So it's just, yeah, that's why I said it's important to get, and this relationship, these are the same length from here to here, and then from here to here, which is a little bit where that dip in the jaw goes. Uh -huh. um, it's a little bit below the halfway point, right? You'll see this is a little bit below the halfway point. Um, these lines are the same size. So, this way, that way. Um, and then each portion needs to kind of, these light and dark shapes need to kind of fit together like little puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. Can you take a picture of that and send to me? Yeah, the whole thing or just the sketch? Just no, the, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yep, I did, yes, in this form, yeah, hold up. Here, hold on. Right side up or up, I think, I think looking at it upside down is gonna be more helpful. Probably not for me. You're going to struggle to see it more, but all right, here we go. Yeah, I, I, I think I can turn it upside down if I need it. If you need it to. Okay, there you go. Thank I've you. been feeling this. That's why I was like, white spot, dark, 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 and dark. These shapes all have to ha have a very distinct pattern, and uh -huh. he's bulging out too much here, right? He's uh, on the black, I will jump too much. Uh, no, but also on the white. The white is misshapen too. It's not, we don't, you don't have the shape correct on the white. It comes out and then in and up. And this is all white here. And you've got, you know, you'll see this is too circular and wide. It's um, oblong. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've been actually that I saw, so that I've corrected while you were doing. So it's a whole like kind of, yeah, anyway, shape thing. Anyway, how, how's it going with colors, you guys? Are you having fun? Is it weird? Does anybody need help? Anybody want to send me their colors? This is a really tricky one. This dog has very strange bone structure. Yeah, and you know, I, I was stupid to take a tilting head instead of the straight forward. Right. Ooh, Emma. So the remind me, the right half is acrylic and the left half is gouache. Mm -hmm. That's yep. awesome. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm not sure if I love colors. What do you think? I think like it needs uh, I think you could use some, I think I like the colors, but I think it needs a, a hot pink or a hot green or a turquoise or all of them splashed in there. How's that? I like that. Yes. I think this will actually be a beautiful base and then adding a few splashy colors on top will be freaking awesome. Cool. All right, Jean. So Jean, remember there's a dark line all the way around. Yeah, I've lost that, but I'll get it back. Oh, you'll get it back. Good. 
Interesting. And I, so I see you're kind of playing with a base. Are you going to put bright colors on top? Or are you going to stick with these colors? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to wait till I get the shadows in and then I'm going to see. I like it. All right, coming along. Uh, notice that there's a pretty distinct, what I think you're missing right now is this, I'm going to, here, I'm going to, sorry, I'm pointing to something that you can't <laughs> I'm missing the dark uh, face. <laughs> missing, if you look at your pair here, you're going to see you're totally missing a mid-tone here. There's a dark yes, you're right, you're right. Yep, yep. Uh, Same. You've also lost your light here. So your lightest area is not actually, so go back and push your lights. Oh, Jackie, that's totally fun. Um, so Jackie, here's what I'd say. Although I like really how this looks. Your yellow is gonna be way too dark. It's too dark. I put light yellow and white in, but it's still too dark. You just haven't put in enough. So just keep so looking. You, so if it's still wet, I would just go in with straight white and we'll see if you can mix oh, okay. it. Just go right in. Okay. And, um, and if not, just let it dry for a few minutes and then you'll go over with a lighter color. But can you see the different? So that yellow color is a great medium. Yeah. Great medium. It's just not a fantastic. Um, and, oh, I guess I'll be... Okay, so I there's okay, there's something interesting going on. I see your blue is your medium. Your yeah, is your medium. I get it. All right, that can work. But yeah, um, what you should do is save your there are actually several values in here. If we want to get really analytical about it. This is one, 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 one. Right? Yeah. These are ones. Uh, let's see. I don't really see any twos actually. What I see are three, four, five, four, mm -hmm. four, five, five, maybe a two here, mm -hmm. maybe a three here, maybe a four here maybe a three here, right? Yeah. So there are new, you can use that yellow, that ochre as a, uh, and how, the, how does the paint feel, by the way? It's kind of fun. Yeah. It's, scary. it's kind of like, it's fun, isn't it? It yeah. like makes things happen, really. It may, it sort of brings the, the, the image to life very quickly, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. one of the things I want you not to worry about, and I'll show you guys here now, um, this, these, this, this paint is now dry, right? Because it's acrylic paint. Do not worry. I can totally. So I've just decided after talking with Emma, I was like, yeah, I want some hot pink in my. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to do two things. I am going to make my, I'm going to change my dark from blue to purple. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to mix myself a dark purple using pink and red, using red and blue. And create a green, a kind of uh, light green for my light. So I've got this kind of turquoisey color. We'll see if I can make this happen with my little gob of colors here. Yeah, so I would like to change my colors, right? I'm absolutely changing my colors. Um, so let's start with my purple. So I'm gonna mix blue with pink to get a kind of nice dark purple. I'm using more blue, you can see, and I can just go right over. Oh, and now I've got this very rich color because I've gone over, right? I can just go right over. When my paintbrush gets a little dry and scratchy, I can dip it in the water. I can go right over it. So that's the one thing I can do, but also, Say I, oh, I went too thick there, right? Oops, went too thick. I'm gonna wait a minute for it to dry and then I'll show you what we can do. But in the meantime, I'm kind of going around here, going around here. Now I'm gonna change my uh, light. 
to um, this a kind of a lime green. That's way more exciting. Oh, I'm gonna have to go way light on this. I think that'll work. Um, so I'm adding lots and lots of yellow. Yeah, I like that better. So you see how I can totally go over something and I can go over anything. And I can even like kind of go over areas where like, oh, I had some dark there that's really light. Oh, the light kind of bulges out this way. So see, I can go back over. Once everything dries, I can just go back over with the correct shape. So that's the really, really awesome thing about uh, paint is that you can erase with it. See? Um, let's see. I'm going to do white. I'm going to do a hot paint background. I know I have to keep this background very light. Yep, so I just used too much pink here. So now I'm just going to tiny bit of pink with my white. So I'm going to come in here and where my pink is too thick, see how I'm just bringing it right over my blue in that line. So if I want to, if I'm like, oh, that line is like too, Strong. Let's see, that's not yet, not quite yet. So it's very erasable, but you have to be able to see what needs to be erased. This is what Diana and I were just talking about. What needs to be erased on that dog to get the shape right? And we tend to get very like stuck on our first lines, like, oh, my first line. Ugh, this is looking very murky. But anyway, you can see that I'm able to like go right over. Oh, that's still wet. I have to wait till it dries. Well, that's good enough for now. So you see how I can just kind of go right in, carve it out. totally change the my current base color but I'm okay with that so you see how I can I can go in with the lighter color over a darker color that's why acrylics really awesome I can totally do that and put light over dark so I can reshape that the way I need to shape it make it center so you don't have to worry so much about making mistakes. Now you can decide, do you want to use the same white for light color number one for your um, for your tabletop or do you want to change it to something else? Like do you want to make it a light blue or something like that? So you have all kinds of options. Uh, there's no restrictions here. Oh, Emma, that turned out, yeah, much nicer. There you go, now we're having fun. So Tosh, where is your actual, um, it looks pretty good, so let's see the colors. Don't leave us in suspense. Okay. That looks great. So I would say that the only issue you've got here is this is too dark. These purples are too dark. Oh, Addie, that's fantastic. Very nice. Very nice. You guys, these are all great. Look at the difference between Emma's, uh, uh, Tasha's, and Addie's. But look at how much they all read like pear. Aren't you pleased? Hi, Addie's dad. Are you Addie's dad? Hi, Laura. 
Oh, hi, look at what she's doing. So look at the difference between these. So Tosh, I would say the only thing that's going on here is that these purples are too dark in this, um, in, the, in the purples in the white centers are a little too dark. So I would go over with the lighter. And my suggestion would be a kind of light yellow. Okay. Once they dry, right? Then you'll have some fun kind of popping but isn't it already kind of pretty? And if you're like, and I like this, but if you feel like this red is too dull, you can go over with a darker red, you know, a, a, a brighter red on top. Yeah, I don't really like colors, but I was impressed when I transferred. Transferred it, right? It looks great. It's really fun. Yeah, just keep going. And whoever finishes gets to do another one. So I have two more. I'll take pictures of them and I'll send them across the thread. So whoever does this, who keeps going, wants to keep going, we've got another 40 minutes. So I'll send you a couple of suggestions of things you could try. But this is kind of a fun way of, um, of uh, working, isn't it? Because it's you're getting to do you're kind of learning about simplifying. You're learning about how paint works. It's, but you're like getting to kind of choose some colors. All right, now I decided I hate that brush. I hate that kind of brush. I need to get better brushes. And I'm gonna clean my water and I'm gonna try and make some, I don't like my colors either. So they're gonna change. So don't worry, I'm still gonna be showing you how to paint stuff, but I want you to start thinking about how you can use color to your advantage. Let's see here. I'm not having to instruct. What do I want to do? Let's see. Let's Funny, I feel like I have very few good acrylic brushes right now. Everything's getting sort of co-opted over to oil and then I can't bring it back. You're gonna think I'm crazy? Paint your problems. But, but go to Ikea. Yeah. And in their children's section, they have these paint sets which have some really cool neon watercolors, but they have these paint brushes that I love. <laughs> oh my God. All right. And they're like $2.79 yeah, for five brushes. They're really well made. They're fantastic. They have short handles. So if you don't like short handles, you won't like them. But they're really good brushes. That's really cool, Ikea, I'm on it. Yeah, I buy like little collections and then they all they all just end up getting sort of moved over to oil. I have like 100,000 oil brushes <laughs> and I have a few really big, um, uh, I have a few really big um, uh, acrylic paint brushes because I do a lot of work. I do a lot of big, I do a lot of big paint, so I have all these big acrylic brushes, but I don't, oh, oh damn. These, I've had these for several months now, and I use them for all my acrylic and watercolor, and they, and they've lasted really well, they wash up well. That's awesome. I'm they're, on I'm right, so and, and they've got, uh, like, two kind of, um, 
almost oriental, like the kind you use for ink, like they're kind of tapered up and then they have a couple of flat ones and they're really good. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to work with what I got. All right, I'm not super happy with what I got, but we will be happy. Okay, so you paint brush. And what I don't like about this brush is it holds on to paint too much. It doesn't go. Okay. Oh, that's so irritating. <laughs> How could I be out of, all right, I'm out. So anyway, let's see. What am I gonna do? Um, you will notice a couple of things as you start lightening your colors. That white, well, sometimes it can do nice things, can be kind of flattening. That like you can flatten too much. Your white can make it, like too much white can make a color look kind of flat. So I use some white in certain ways, but I'm more likely to use yellow. Yellow is a warmer color. Oh yeah, and I lost my medium there. So. Let's see. Is everybody having fun with this? This is not bad, is it? It's kind of like doable. That's my plan for you. I just want it all to be kind of doable. I am excited to be back to weekday acrylics. Yeah, yeah, painting, yeah, it does feel nice, doesn't it? I don't know, really, as you know. As we know. And I see what Emma's doing over there. She's experimenting with gouache to see how she can kind of uh, bring it back, how it's, how much it's like acrylic and how much it's not like acrylic. Right, Emma, you're doing that? Yep. I'm just going a little crazy right now. I'm awesome. Print it. Print it. Let's see it. I'm All right. Oh, you're student number one. <laughs> Meaning, like, you know how that there's like the first person who I don't know brings COVID into something, or you know who has the patient zero. She's patient yeah. zero. She's patient zero. She's student zero. You're a student zero, Emma. You're the first one. Yeah, I guess it's got a good um, You can even see that my pink looks too pastel -y. It's not really pretty. But, you know, stop complaining yet. Yeah, just put the damn paintbrush and fix it. I'm whining. So here, I kind of lost my shape. You see, I'm kind of going back into, yeah, you guys can see. Let's see. There's 
there's very few wrong color combinations. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome, Emma. It's great. It's your student, I see it as your dissertation for your student. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby, that's it, exactly. We're having a good time. Yeah, that's wonderful. Look at how all the textures in Emma's piece are playing off each other, including the book texture, the background, the paper that she picked. That's pretty radical. Uh, Jackie, how's it feeling for you? It's kind of neat, isn't it? You seem to be. Yeah, I'm just playing with um, color oh. right now. Isn't it fun? Yeah. <laughs> you can see there's very few wrong moves you make as long as you pay attention to value. Value is the most important thing. That's all you need. All you need is value. <laughs> yep, thank you. Whoever do that with me. And you can see Emma's playing also with some textures in her backgrounds that are kind of fun. Somebody needs to go to the art store tomorrow. I need to keep up my acrylic supplies. Is anybody surprised when you lay down color that it's darker or lighter than you think it will be? Are you having that experience? I'm having issues with the the purples, the pink. The pink throws me off in terms of darker light, the pinker purples, but. Make a picture of it in black and white. Yeah. Turn it I think I figured it out, but. Yeah. At first it was it was definitely throwing me off. It was throwing you. It's funny, Jean. You're now having enough theory that I notice it's kind of um it's becoming pro it can be become problematic for you. So I want to simplify this for you in some way. And the way I'm gonna do that is to say, um really it's about shape, value and mark making, right? So it's really about the shape and the value uh, more than the hue, the saturation, the you know cool or the warm. Um, so just like bring it back to that all the time and shapes in relation to each other, right? Then if so, if you're feeling yourself going down that rabbit hole, Pull yourself back a little bit by saying, wait, it's just really about value and shape. And it becomes like I mean, on this pair 
on the left, there's definitely more distinct threes, fours, and fives. The others are a little bit less obvious, less. You'll find that your idea about color changes once you uh, once you can attune. I think that's one of the biggest things that you need to get used to in painting is is uh, relating color to value, and then. And then you'll find that you have new ways of thinking about color, which is kind of nice. Because this is a, like we are straight out copying somebody else's painting, I will of course not put this up for sale. And I would advise you guys to be careful about how you list it, right? Cause it's not weird, you know, it's copyrighted to her. Not, there wasn't a copyright issue, but I just wouldn't sell it. So because of that, I'm just goofing. Like I'm really like, ugh, just layering one color on top of the other to see what happens. Um, it's funny when you're a professional, you get so used to selling everything, <laughs> like literally everything that you paint. Um, it's weird when you're working on something that you're not going to sell. It's kind of weird. It's like, oh, okay, I can just totally goof with this. Interesting. Yeah, I know it needs to happen. I think Megan wants to share oh, no, her. No, no, not, no. Me, not me. Oh, okay. No. Megan, Megan did a, a skyline. Let's see it. Want to send it across the thread, Megan? I mean, I'm just holding it up in my window. Oh, but I oh that looks great. Beautiful color choices. Here, okay. hold on. Let me um, put it up so we can see it. Uh, here we go. Oh, very nice, Megan. Well, that's lovely. Very nice. Good use, good color choices. How do you feel about using the brush? Were you How do you feel about it? Do you like it? Yeah. It's fun, isn't it? Good work, ladies. Great work. Jackie, hold yours up since we got you up there. Oh, cool. Um, except mine is harder to hold up because I'm not, I'm doing it enough. Wet, right? Oh, yeah, that's looking great. Nice. Yes. How fun. <laughs> Oh, that is just joyful. I love the color choices. They're fantastic. Um, all right, yeah, keep going. You know what? I am going to actually, I'm gonna spotlight all of you. Tosh Ween, hold up your painting so we can see it. I just wanna see wherever it is. Oh yeah, baby really fun oh my god so fun such fun colors all right addy are you ready hold up your painting so you can here and replace it do it you're here 
Oh, hey. Great. They're all so great. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, I'm working on the background things. color currently. So oh, yeah, work on the background colors. These are great. Don't forget the shadows, uh, which should be about a three. The, I love the blending. Uh, Emma, look at that. Look at her blend. Emma, look at her blending. Nice work. That is awesome. Really awesome. Okay, Emma, since we've got you, why don't you hold up what you've got? Here we are. <laughs> Tape the table, one second. Okay. Oh, so cool. Wow. <laughs> that background's amazing. Crazy. I love it. It's got this carnival circus atmosphere. Uh, Gene, it's wonderful. Jean, let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to replace yours. Nice. Oh, oh wow. Gosh, guys, everything is doing. <laughs> Honestly. All right. Uh, Diana, you want to show yours as well where you're at on it? Uh, I know you're, you're very good about, let's see. Oh, that's already looking better. Uh, replace spotlight. There we go. Oh, that's already looking better. Already, you're getting it. You're now you're getting him. You're getting him. Yeah. All right. This is awesome. Um, I really uh want to introduce more. Um, uh, let's see. Here, hold on. I want to. I want to introduce more um exercises like this, where you guys get to pick some of your stuff. Because I know we've been. I've been really, you know, big on you learning how to do different subjects right but i feel like um we really need to have room for playing in here as well because right work's really stressful and we really need room for playing i wish christina was here i think she would really like this class and there is always work huh? yeah yeah there's always work right? which reminds me that i actually have to go back get back to work. Well, drat. Well, good work today. Thank you the nice break. Thank you, guys. Nice to see you, Diana. Are we going to see you tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to try to. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Very nice, you guys. These are just fantastic. Yay. Love them. Oh, oops. I can see why. Camera's about to run out. I'll be right back, you guys. I got to get my charging.
15 minutes left. So see, as you're making your painting decisions, think about what I can do um, that can like kind of help the overall composition. What's the thing that's gonna move me forward the fastest? Looking at mine and realizing that I definitely need more of my dark lines. I've kind of lost those. actually. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. I wasn't sure if I was on mute. I just sent you what I have and I'm trying to decide when I'm done. What do you think? Ah, you're done. Don't do another thing to this. It's perfect. It's perfect. Always, I was like, I like that there's <laughs> Space kind of over this side, which kind of, which is a little, it's not even empty. It's got like writing and all kinds of things on it, right? But some sort of like uh, compositionally less complicated spaces, right? Mm -hmm. um, to go along with all these layers of different things that you did. Oh, Emma, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so you've written down the dates that I need you, right? Yes, I did. Okay, and then um, we will talk about uh, what you're going to do for those later, but put them on the calendar. We're definitely going to need you. Okay, that sounds good. This is really wonderful. Oh, it's so pretty. And these aren't your usual colors. I like it that you kind of push outside your box. And then yeah. you were like, I don't really like them. And then we discussed how to make it work so that you still like them and... They're kind of more muted colors than you usually do, which I like. I think that's really fun. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, nice work. So, Leo, would this be abstract expressionism? No. This is not abstract at all. Okay. It's uh, it's just um, uh, maybe impressionist. Yeah, abstract expressionism is abstract. Right. That means there's no figurativeness. I mean, I would call this, let's see, I call this, um, I mean, really, I just call it impressionism. Okay. Everything that's kind of focused more on lights and color, you know, lights and values is more um, kind of impressionism than anything else. As long as it's like something, impressionism is the word to use. Mm -hmm. Good question. Abstract expressionism is Carista's work. Okay. Because there's really no figure in it. So the idea of where I'd like to take these classes is to make sure that like people can kind of jump in at any level, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep stuff where you can kind of choose your materials a little bit. The instructions are still clear, you know, obviously. Oh yeah, Jean, that's coming along nicely, nice. Um, this is still too dark. This part is still too dark. Yeah, I'm working on it now. Work on that. But other, I love the soft blues and the, I really like what's happening. I love, I love the kind of mauvey shadows that you, that's very moody and mauvey and like kind of the loose dark light, medium lines you've got waving down here. That really works. I also like this little bit of pink kind of poking up behind yeah. it blue it's very nice you see how much uh, action that gives the piece 
it's really, it's me. <laughs> Buddy, you want to come up and say hi? Oh, somebody was getting pesky. Somebody was bothering his sister, which is why he got oh. here. Here, bud, bud. I'm going to show here. Let's see if I can have the spotlight. It's pet sharing time. Here you go. Come in. Oh, you big behemoth. He was really bothering his sister, like harassing her, chasing her around the apartment. You know, oh. he was trying to get close, but oh, it makes her crazy. <laughs> love me, love me, love me, love me. <laughs> Eat you up. <laughs> Come along, Jean. Very nice. Uh, I just need another one. Yeah, just keep painting. I just sent another one, Leah. I saw it. Oh, okay. I didn't hear what you said. Very nice. Let's see. Fun, Tosh. Oh my God, so fun. You took that in a totally different direction. Yeah. I love it. Nice, yes, and I like how you're testing it. So look at how Tosh Ween is testing her values um, with the dark slice. Addie, that's looking great. So great. Oh my God, how fun. All right, you guys are just gonna keep working on these till you finish them. I would like to see your last uh, ones now. Trouble, do not. No, don't jump up on the thing. No, don't, don't, I do not. You shall not. <laughs> nice, Jackie. Oh, yeah, you're having fun with color all night. Yeah, I'm having fun over here. Yeah, you are having fun over here. See, painting is awesome. It's not scary at all. <laughs> we were afraid, Jackie. You've been afraid of painting. Isn't this fun? 
we we yeah. will talk about um color theory we'll play with color theory we're gonna you know move to other projects where color mixing is more important where blending is important but i thought it would be fun to play with kind of already uh, uh already simplified things so you could see how other artists do it um, we might try to copy like a, a famous artist next week just to see, you know, a piece of something, just like little still lifes right now, just to see um, uh, what we can do, because it's it is really fun. And I've just given you guys two other sources that you could totally do on your own. So if you feel like you want to repeat this exercise, use one of the lessons that I. I set up for you. All right, I can see he wants to go out. Hang on. There we go. Get your lights in, Jean. You know, it's funny, you're still kind of fighting on this uh, one on the left. Nice, Tosh. God, these are great. So fun. I got him lighter than he was. So, so fun. All right, so you guys, I'm also gonna start selling, sending you, um, we have four in the next, in the last two weeks of September, there are four uh, so you think you can't draw workshops coming up uh, on different days, but kind of similar after work times. Um, and I would, I, I want us to really encourage our colleagues to come out and try it. Addie, nice. Boy, this is great. This is just great. You're on fire. Everybody's on fire. Look at how different these are and look at how great they are. Same subject, completely different treatments right but you're still paying attention to rules so you're not just making it up you're kind of making up the colors as you like them you're still having to test shapes values you're having to uh, evaluate like colors next to each other um and you see you really can't go wrong there's really no way to go wrong as long as you've got to lock on shape and value you can do a lot of things with color Leah, did you resend the original? Can we look at it now? Okay, you want to look at it? Let me do it. Here, come on. I don't remember what it looked like. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Gorgeous, the original. Wow. Oh. Right? So it gives you some ideas about... I'm glad you didn't look at it. but it gives you some ideas on how she thinks about color. I think it's a woman who does this. Isn't that neat? Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right, you guys, great work. Uh, tomorrow, if you can make it, not for you, Addie, but for everybody else, figure drawing. <laughs> but Addie, you could totally come to Saturday's beginning drawing class if you wanted to. That would be a lot of fun. So we'd love to see you. So um, when, when is it? Saturdays at your time. It's nine o'clock your time. Okay. Yeah. If you can do it, yeah. fine. Emma, yeah, you nice can me. jump into any class you want to too. So if you can, if you want to, if you want to do, you know, take the assignment and run it the way you want to, you should join. All right, you guys, great work today. The video will be up shortly. Great. Wonderful. Thanks everyone. Bye. Good job, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.